I got asked a question about whether I would cross my tunnels, meaning go from medial aspect to lateral root and from lateral aspect to medial root as a way to ease tunnel placement and try and get it more anatomic. What I find is in doing that, though, you can crisscross your tunnels, and if you're doing a concomitant ACL or PCL, then you might run into problem with your graft. So instead, rather than crossing our tunnels as I'm showing here, I prefer to come more straight at it as opposed to crossing. So I like to actually decorticate the bone with a the high speed burr and then I'll drill for a medial root from the medial side just medial to the tibial tubercle and from the lateral side just lateral to the tibial tubercle. I find that I can easily reach the anatomic insertion of the root and get a good root repair without having to worry about crossing my tunnels or running into any type of graft construct. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and drill up with a commercial pin. I'm going to do this before doing an ACL tunnel or doing a suture pass. So I want to make sure that these tunnels are correct and don't vary from the intended target. And once I've got those passed, then I'll pass my sutures through the posterior horn and then come back and later tuck up a suture loop to pull the sutures back down into their respective tunnels. So you can see here I'm just pointing that I've got my medial entry point going into my medial root and then I'll reach up and pass a couple of luggage tag sutures to allow me to get an anatomic root repair. Now if I've already placed my root repair tunnels and then I've drilled my ACL tunnel then I will place a spinal needle up with a suture shuttle so that if I happen to, I might penetrate the graft or get alongside the graft as opposed to actually losing the suture by placing it first and then trying to pull my graft up and through it. Uh, people have also asked me about fixation on the tibia side. I actually prefer commercially available suture anchors that thread in. You can tie over buttons and it may be a little bit cheaper, but what I find is having tried that, that I actually broke the suture so I had to go back and repass the suture limb or conversely I can't achieve the exact tension that I want. If you're going to pass and tie over a button then perhaps two sutures might be the way to go for the simple fact that you can tension with one then tie with the second one to maintain the tension on the repair site that you'd like before tying down the tensioning suture. With commercially available anchors you simply drill your pin so that you can pass your suture with it then go ahead and drill and or tap your socket for your suture anchor because once you place your graft passing limb up there you can't tap it you run the risk of cutting that passing suture itself so here i'm showing how i like to pass in the posterior horn with the nova stitch plus device i'll go ahead and pass both limbs which will leave me the loop in the bottom jaw i can just retrieve this loop out of the bottom jaw and then pulling my top sutures from the upper jaw i simply tuck these through the bottom loop and that makes me a easy luggage tag and I don't have to worry about suture shuttling because I'm coming straight in and out of the same portal and I do not use a cannula for this because that technique keeps you from getting suture tangles. Sometimes I'll pass more medial to lateral or lateral to medial. It's just a matter of which is the easiest to get to so I can go ahead and pass my second suture. So I'll go ahead and pass a second luggage tag. In this case, I put one more anterior, so now I'm going to put one more posterior because I want to be able to get good compression down onto my root repair. And again, once I pass through, I'm going to pull out of the same portal I've come in, retrieve that bottom loop, pull the suture tails out of the top jaw through my bottom loop to create an all-inside luggage tag, which makes it much easier for suture shuttling. So for lateral meniscus, I'm passing through the lateral portal. For the medial meniscus, I'm passing through the medial portal. And once I've got my suture limbs passed through, then I'll go ahead and put my retrieving loop up. Again, if I've used a spinal needle, I might put up a metallic type kite. You can also run a strand of PDS up there and tie the standard suture loop on there to shuttle your sutures back through. Here I'm using a, a Parkus open eyelet pin, which allows me to push my retrieving suture up and in and then simply just twist the pin and it offloads the loop and allow you to grasp it with your 
grasper. Now, once you've got your loop back out your portal, you have to take an important step and you have to grab all of your suture limbs in a simple suture shuttle technique to make sure that you pull them all out through the same portal and there's no tissue bridge. Once you have assured yourself of that, it's a simple matter of loading the sutures into the pulling loop and then pulling them down into your tibial tunnel. So now we're down and we're into our tibial tunnel and we can start pulling our tension. By doing it this way, we're able to securely hold the tension instead of trying to tie over the button. Remember, we've already punched and tapped for our tibial anchor. You can tie over a button like we talked earlier. I just prefer the anchor. I also use peak because the biodegradables tend to fracture here. So once you've got a good secure position, you like the tension on your sutures, then you use one of these commercially available suture anchors. In this case, this design has a pilot that will go up into the tunnel, and then the anchor will be able to disengage and come up and screw into the tunnel itself, securing my sutures. There's not a great fear about cutting these sutures. I have it to date. I'm sure that could happen, but I've also broken the sutures tying over a button. And we know from tying these sutures with regular suture anchors, securing them with regular suture anchors, they tend not to break just by the suture anchor going past it. So in this case, I'm able to precisely control the tension. I'm looking arthroscopically to make sure I've got it seated down onto the root repair site, and I can advance my anchor fully to depth without increasing the tension on the repair site, and thereby recreating an anatomic root repair.